just the same as the decorations on the Christmas trees, I guess. Another thing they do is paste paper cuttings on the windows. In the old days, when the windows were covered with paper, these paper cuttings would provide an opulent silhouette. But these days, gluing the paper cutting to the glass—well, that's how tradition evolves. Another evolving thing is the food here. The grand festival dinner here, traditional, consists of eight courses. All meat, no vegetables. And just as they do for any big occasion, dumplings complete the picture. Guess what people wrap inside these dumplings? Steamed carrots and meat. When dinner is ready, the family sits on the kong, a big fire-heated bed around a small table for the grand meal. To gather around the table and have dinner is a warm symbol of family union, just as it is in most cultures. And the more family members that turn up, the more rounded the family is, which translates as perfect. <laughs> The old man, the drum player, sang a song called the Wine Song. It's the special song to be sung at the occasion to encourage people's spirit for drinking. The Lantern Festival happens during the first full moon of the Chinese New Year, when the bright light of the round moon provides a solid reason to celebrate. Around this part of China, under the moon, people have a tradition of jumping through a bonfire to get rid of all the bad luck for the past year and get good luck for the coming New Year. Every family member needs to do this. The next day is the 15th of the first month of Chinese New Year, the official day of Lantern Festival, and people started to gather in the city of Yan'an for the once-a-year parade show. Sugar. Here in Yan'an, I think it's redder than anywhere else. This has always been the most exciting day in Yan'an. Performers from nearby regions will all gather here, and so will the spectators. Tens of thousands are expected to show up and watch the parade show along the road. Can you hear it? It's coming. Each year on this day, the local people have carefully planned and organized a large-scale performance, and they invite players from nearby counties to give a grand show. Each region tries to rival the others and put on the best possible show.
there I spotted my drum teacher, who is too busy enjoying himself to notice me among the crowd. This is so exciting! It's been an hour, but more and more parade just coming up, dancing one after another. One is better than the other. You can't see anything like this in the big cities. It's fantastic! Still fresh from the excitement of the grand gathering, I set out to visit a road built by Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor to unite China. He built a number of roads throughout the country. This one was built to last with layers of stemmed earth, limestone, each layer 7 centimeters thick. This is one reason archaeologists have decided this was a road built by Emperor Qin. See those marks? Over 2,000 years ago, this gigantic rock was on the way, in the way of the straight road. So they cut it half off, and this one half was left, like a huge road curb. The road was built as a military supply route, so it went in a straight manner with as few curves as possible. This was to ensure the fastest possible transportation of soldiers and supplies. 34 steps! The width of the road is between 20 to 60 meters. That would be about 30 meters wide, the road, at this point. Enough to allow large number of armies marching forward north at the same time, more than 2,000 years ago. left to see, but the process of looking is still fun. When the American journalist Edgar Snow came over here more than half a century ago, he had all kinds of questions in his mind, just like the rest of the world. What kind of army was this Red Army, and uh, who were their leaders? Today, that's no longer any questions now. But for me, when you come over here, the sense of history-making is still the same. Between 1937 and 1948, Yan'an and the nearby region was the center of the Communist Party of China, before the founding of the People's Republic of China in 1949. The Red Army emerged from the 8,000 mile long march and settled down here to establish their base. You can find well-preserved homes here that used to accommodate such legendary figures as Mao Zedong, Zhu De, and Zhou Enlai. Some of the furniture is the original staff, and some pieces are copies. But from these traces, you can see the austere lifestyle they led during those 13 years while they pursue their belief to build a better world. Under strict economic
economic difficulties, the Red Army, also known as the Eighth Root Army at the time, started a mass production campaign, which means soldiers participated in farming and spinning to ensure their daily supply. Even the high-ranking officials are no exception. Among them, Premier Zhou Enlai was best known for his excellent spinning skill. It was a time of complete idealism. Officers and soldiers alike lived on rations. As Edgar Snow described, they lived on unimaginable small amount of supplies. Yet they stood proud and in good spirits. Want to experience a moment of being a red soldier? We have all the outfit here. And the pistol case and the red star, the cap with the red star. Another symbol of Yan'an is this Yan'an Pagoda. In China, everyone knows it as a landmark of Yan'an, the base of revolution. But few people also know that it was an ancient pagoda built during the Song Dynasty, nearly 1,000 years ago. Today, on the cliffs at the foot of the hill, you can still find inscriptions down around that time by famous calligraphers. This is like the most famous pagoda all over China. I've known it since I was a little kid. And I can't believe it is hollow inside and I could be actually inside it someday like this. The nine floor brick pagoda was quite a climb. It was very narrow inside. Finally, this is the top floor. I thought I'll never get here. Oh, it's a little bit windy here. And you can really see the whole city from here. Oh, you can see really far. During time of war, I would volunteer to be the guard here. Watch out for the city. Without a doubt, Yan takes a very special position in China's history of revolution. At the same time, people here maintain a deep-rooted Chinese tradition. If you want to catch both of it, you'd better come around major festivals, like the Spring Festival and the Lantern Festival. This is Travelog, and I'm Liu Changying in Yan'an.